This is Weekend Winners and it's episode 100. So it's a big edition of Weekend Winners coming your way. And we've got a couple of young guns joining us as well. Leonard Kane and Brendan Barnes, both, as you would expect, have big drives coming through, or big books of drives coming through on the weekend. So I'm going to pick their brain and see if they can steer us into a winner or two this weekend. We've got a 10 race program at Albion Park on Saturday night. Action gets underway at 5.42. Hopefully, I can find a good thing for the weekend as well, and hopefully I'll share that with you. More to come there, but let's get into it. Leonard Kane and Brendan Barnes coming your way. Leonard Kane joins us to go through his book of drives for Saturday night. We've got 10 in total, and Leonard's in five of those races, and he joins us now. Leonard, appreciate the time. No problem at all, thank you. Living Again is your first drive. He goes around in race three. He's number three now. He was first up off a long break last week. Were you happy with the run, and is he likely to need another couple of runs before hitting peak fitness? Um, yeah, no, I was a little bit... I wasn't disappointed, you know. I didn't expect much going into the run, considering he'd had so long off, and he's such a... Um, he does... He, he probably does too well, you know, so he even looked fat going into Saturday night. But um, he, no, I think he'll need, he'll need a good couple of runs before he sort of comes back to um, his best. So what you were saying, he's a gross little fella. Oh, for sure, definitely. Yeah, no, he does way too well off just looking at feed, so. <laughs> this race is going to generate tempo as well. Uh, at West Point, Sean Trey, Casino, Tommy, they're all likely to push forward, so you're just going to put him away somewhere and uh, whatever he does, he's you know, hopefully going to just keep improving. So another couple of runs for him. Yeah, that's it, Chris. Yeah, exactly right. All right, race number five on Saturday night, a hooker chopper. He comes up with a good draw, gate two over the mile. Hasn't been far away of late, and he's a last starter runner-up. How do you rate his chances? Um, no, I rate his chances really well last week. He's trained on really good since his last run. He'd been a touch disappointing of late, but um, like you say, he's got a good draw. Hopefully if we can land handy early. Um, he is quick when he's at his best, so hopefully he's back to his best and he'll put in a really good performance on Saturday night. Do you think you can head off the one-horse Simon? I don't think so. Um, we'll have a little crack, obviously, but um, yeah, I don't think so. They seem to always sort of want to lead on it as well, so I'm tipping they're going to be coming out um, smoking. All right. Governor Jew John's the class horse of this field. He's drawn out in gate six. You would have seen the run last week. Really good, so he's clearly the horse to beat. Oh, for sure, Chris. Yeah, no, he was first up last week and raced really well um, sitting outside him, so he's definitely the one to be following, you know. All right. Race seven. This is a high-quality three-year-old race. Uh, Almighty Max is your drive. He's up in grade, but he's a talented type. Uh, can he can he measure up here? Well, I think he can, Chris. Yeah, and no, like you say, he um, he's definitely shown that he's got talent. Um, you know, he does a couple. He's got a couple of behavioural problems by the looks of him. Um, but you know, if he puts it all together, I think he'll be right there with this field. Do you think he's better suited over the sprint trip or this sort of middle distance range? Uh, probably the middle distance range, to be honest. Um, so, no, I think look, if we can get the right kind of run, I think you won't be far away. All right. Race number eight. This is a race for the mares, and your drive here is number four, Hot and Gold. She's had a trial since her last run. Is that right? Yes, yeah, she has. Yep, okay. Yep. What are we expecting here on Saturday night? Um, you know, she's trained on really well. Obviously, you know, she had that good trial uh, last week, but she will still benefit from the run so you know we probably won't look to do too much with her but um, if we can settle handy she's definitely still capable to run a really nice race in that it looks really open this race uh, Mataki magic now with the dixon stable witch hunt going well aj Bree uh, aj breezy rose going well feels like a winner and then you've got charming charlotte quick step so there's a few here that have good claims absolutely yeah no like you say it's an open race and it's um it, it all comes down to who gets the best trip and um, you know, the way the race is run, to be honest. So that being said, gate four over a mile potentially can be a little sticky. Where do you want to be going into that first turn? Oh, look, it'll be great to settle one out, one back, one out, two back, but it could be a bit tricky to get there. So, um, look, we'll be aiming up to look for a gap early and hopefully we can settle close enough to them and I think should be right and finish if we can do so. OK, race 10, the last, another race for the mares here in uh, Wahakan Dream. She's a model of consistency, this mare. Uh, first time unplaced at Albion Park, running fourth last week, but that run was still full of merit. Yeah, for sure, yeah. No, I wasn't disappointed with the run um, last start. She probably wasn't as good as what she usually would be, but um, she was probably a tad flat. She'd had three runs in a row, so, um, you know, she wasn't disappointing, but she was a little bit below par, I felt. Um, so, no, I think she's trained on really well since, and she looks well and feels well, so um, I think it's the right sort of race for her. If she can get the right kind of run, um, she'll definitely be in it. 
Okay, well, that's the key because when you sort of map this race, Total Diva probably looks the leader. Waz Firebug could easily just pop in behind it. So it may not generate enough tempo for your liking. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely, Chris. Yeah, no, the way the race has sort of been drawn, it, um, it, you know, it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of speed early. Like you say, obviously, Total Diva looks the leader. Um, it was good last start. So um, it, it's definitely a tough race, but it's the right kind of race if it's run the suit. Okay, are we saving the best to last? Is she your best drive on the weekend? On paper, I think so, Chris, you know, and like you say, she's very consistent, so it's hard to go past her. Okay, really appreciate the time, Leonard. As always, we'll see you trackside on Saturday night. Thanks very much. Brendan Barnes is about to jump into the hot seat to go through his book of drives for Saturday night, and he's got a strong book as well. Brendan, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. We start with you in race two, which is the open on Saturday night, and you're driving the last start winner, Sam is Perfection. He went really good last time out, but just looking at it on paper here, this draw looks a little sticky. Yeah, it does for sure, and it's a big rising grade, but, you know, he never runs a bad race. That's absolutely right. He was really good winning last time out, and it came as no surprise because sectionally he's been really consistent of late. Things planned out perfectly, and he was able to put them away. Yeah, for sure, and he's got great speed, so it always just comes down to if he gets a good trip, and, and he was back to veterans grade, and he's got a great record in that grade. How do we look at this race on Saturday night? We've got Mac Da Vinci, Tommy Lincoln. They probably look the power players, and they're drawn on your outside, gate six and seven. Uh, where do you want to be going into that first turn? Just sort of somewhere sort of handy. Sort of Obviously, he has to go back and find a bit of cover, but, you know, there could be a little, speed, a little bit of speed there as well, sort of Will the Wizard and Northview Hustler drawn inside. But if there's a bit of speed on and he's not too far away in the last quarter's the slowest, he'll... he'll um, yeah, he'll run home. Okay. We've got an early scratching here of May wins best, so one less to worry about. Does that help in any way? Yeah, I think so. It'll make it a little bit smaller and we'll be a bit closer to the action. So I think, yeah, uh, sort of all running to suit. He should run into the top five. Okay. Well, that's Sam is perfection. Race two. We go across to race number four, and the drive here is Cash Ass Back. I'm, I'm intrigued by your thoughts on this guy. You're no stranger to, to Cash is Back for trainer Gemma Hewitt. I thought he was terrific last time out. Do you share my enthusiasm? Yeah, he's definitely he's going really well. He's another also very, very rarely runs a bad race. Okay, so with only eight in this race and you being the only runner off the second row, you should end up in a fairly good spot or do you just plan on sticking on the back of Lombo Heaven, the horse you're drawn to follow out? Probably have to have a bit of a closer look at that one sort of as we get a bit closer. You know, Lombo Heaven, it can, can sort of race up on the speed, so we'll just have to sort of play it by ear. It's probably going to be a bit of a tricky one to to work out, but probably first thoughts would be to stay there, but we'll have a closer look as we get closer. Okay. Other horses in this race that loom as obvious threats to cash us back. Kian Cruiser, he's stable to mate. He was terrific last time out. In fact, his last couple of runs have been really good. And Mr. Freeze, who's also been really good at his past too. Are they the ones that jump off the page at this stage, or do you give any sort of chance to We Salute You, who won last week, and Saucy Dreams, who's been a little up and down lately? I think those first two you mentioned are probably sort of the best two, but they probably also both are going to get back and probably given us a head start. So, yeah, it's sort of just going to be one of those things where you're just going to know more sort of after probably a couple hundred metres sort of who looks sort of the main dangers. But, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. OK, cash us back. Good chance there in race four. Race five, the following race. Again, your partner with Gemma Hewitt here. He's a favourite of mine, this guy, Rock Fisherman. He's got to go up against Governor Juge on... But it's only a matter of time before this guy wins a race here on the Saturday night circuit. Yeah, for sure. And he's a horse that can do plenty of work too. I think it's, it's a pretty good front line there on Saturday night. There's plenty of speed there, but we just sort of have to see what they're thinking and, and sort of go from there. Okay. Rock Fisherman is a horse that can do some work in his races. So barrier seven over the mile, what are you sort of thinking early? Go forward or just snag and go straight back at the start? Yeah, well, he's a horse that yeah, he can do plenty of work and he seems to run his best races when he does work. So last week he, he, he went really well and um, he sort of he, he played up a little bit uh, coming to the score up and uh, probably had to chase the mobile a little bit. So, yeah, we'll just have to, to talk to Gemma and see what she's thinking, but he definitely can do some work. OK, so if that's the case, you might just be shadowing Governor Juge on every step of the way, hopefully. Quite possibly. OK. Uh, we go across to race number seven, and this is this really strong three-year-old race for Alderman Tools. Your drive is cashed up. You know this guy well. You took the drive in the, uh, the big one during the recent Tab Constellations, the Rising Sun. He's drawn behind the early favourite and Captain Crusader. That's not a bad spot to be. No, for sure. First up, I think he'll take great benefit from the run. He had a little 
a little bit of a let up after his rising sun and the derby campaign, but you know, he's a quality three-year-old. He had a trial earlier this week. Did you catch the action of that trial? Yeah, I did. I, sort of, I was in the trial. I was a long way back in it, but um, I think he sort of trialled all right and he sort of took a bit of benefit from that. And he'll, yeah, he'll be better again after Saturday. Okay. The fact that it is 2,138 metres, is that more to his liking rather than being a mile? Yeah, I think he's pretty versatile, but yeah, he, he hasn't disappointed over any distance really. So, so yeah, I think he's not a one-trick pony. Okay. Uh, Gem is obviously looking at the Breeders' Challenge. So whatever he does on Saturday night, there's obviously going to be a lot more improvement to come. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that's cashed up. We go across to race eight, which is another race for the Mares and feels like a winner is your drive. Uh, she's got gate seven. She's been a runner-up her last two. Did she have her chance last week? Yeah, I, I probably just went for home a little bit early. I um, I thought I could sort of put the leader to bed and, and she probably just switched off a little bit as I was about to cross down. And so it was probably, yeah, my fault. But, you know, she's flying. She can do plenty of work in her runs and, and she's knocking on the door. This is a hard race as far as the overall winner is concerned because there's several mares that have really good form. Yeah, it is. It's, it's very even and there's a number of them that could bob up. Okay. What is your pick of your drives on Saturday night at this point in time? Uh, I think it's probably a toss-up between cash us back and, and feels like a winner, but I'm going to go with, with the mayor just because I think you can sort of, I can put her into the race and, and probably take bad luck out of it. Okay, well, that's race eight, number seven, feels like a winner. Brendan, as always, we appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. A big thanks to both Leonard Kane and Brendan Barnes, and we wish them the best of luck on the weekend. Time now for a good thing, and we've got to be very, very patient. The last race, race 10, number one, Total Diva. We're going to double down with this mare. I labelled her last week. We came up a little short, but she can bounce back this week. Race 10, number one, Total Diva. She'll lead all of the way. She'll take us straight to the winner's circle. So that's our best bet this weekend. Race 10, number one, Total Diva. Remember, if you are having a gamble this weekend, please do so responsibly. We'll see a trackside at Albion Park on Saturday night, the first of 10 repeating at 5.42. We'll see you there, Albion Park, this Saturday night.